Alright, ladies and gents, the second map is gonna be on Daybreak. It's gonna be Chef's Choice, needless to say. This is gonna be interesting. Atlanta Spaceship, not a bad little map, actually. It's something to look at. It's very, very nicely designed. Like, the, the shame about that map is that the beauty of it can't really be shown from the top-down position. This thing is actually a full-on spaceship. The guy who designed it, incredibly talented. But yeah, we'll, we'll see about more Atlanta Spaceship in future. I'm liking the look of that map. That was played very well there by Grubby. But let's see what Chef can do now on Daybreak, a classic map, voted Map of the Year on Team Liquid. Had so many amazing encounters on it. And it's my pleasure, of course, to bring you Liquid Chef. He is in the purple trunks and he is playing Zerg to the southwest of this particular map. Versus his opponent. It is Grubby's Grubby. Yes, the only Grubby. Belonging to Grubby, of Team Grubby. Of the Grubby Invitational Series. <laughs> I love it. I'm sorry, it's like... I, I just imagine going into Grubby's house and finding that everything is branded Grubby. It's like we're watching Grubby's matches on Grubby's television. His Grubby branded TV. Oh, that would be, that'd just be brilliant. It's like, hey, I'd like some tea. No problem, I'll just make you some tea from my Grubby branded kettle. It would be just fantastic. But there you go. It's not a problem, I... I didn't do anything, really. I'm just casting this damn thing. Club 3D's like, we want another show match. Okay, cool. Let's make a best of seven. Let's make it 350 this time. Done. Sorted. Hey, you want a giveaway? Sure, why not? Remember that, folks. Facebook.com slash Club 3D. You like that page. You leave a comment. You have a chance of winning a 560 Ti super clocked. Oh, yeah. Not bad. Forge Fast Expand once again here from Grubby. Nothing too wrong with that. Get, I don't even have to do anything. I can just sit back here and let them do it. There you go. Just commentate the game. Do all the sponsorship plugs. Say why not. <laughs> he knows, man. He knows. Chef knows. Chef always knows. Pylon going down. Hang on. Is that actually the block position? I don't know if it is. It, it seems actually very far away. I guess it might be, but yeah, it's a little bit difficult to tell without build grids or anything like that. But, of course, the response from Chef is once again just to do that. and It can be risky, honestly, to do that, but unless your opponent knows you're going to pull that off, good luck getting a cannon down. It's like, hey, you've moved over here away from your links. doesn't matter because the timing's right in that the links will come out before the pylon finishes. So, Grubby would have had to have, like, a preemptive pile on there waiting for that in order to actually place a cannon to harass that expansion. <laughs> it's lovely, really. It's nice, actually, to see players starting to really get those timings down. It's pretty important because the rigid timings of, say, StarCraft Brood War were pretty vital to the competitive scene later on. Here, we're still kind of working it out, which is why you can still have some very volatile matchups and some weird stuff that doesn't really make any sense. Like last night, for instance, if any of you are watching the IPL Team Arena Challenge, we saw Naniwa versus Thorzane. Naniwa goes Nexus first against two racks proxy. And it's just like, what? <laughs> I, I don't even understand why you would do that. And I have to just imagine it was a misinterpretation, if anything, from Naniwa. I can't imagine any other reason for it. But I have to wonder that later on, if mistakes like that simply will not happen. Like, it will be just impossible for it to occur. It's an intriguing idea. Anyway, what have we got? Well, let's see what Chef is up to. Chef with a nice solid macro build here. And we'll see what Grubby decides to go to after that. It might be Stargate again. I mean, it's, it might be a case if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Also... Admittedly, Grubby's only got one gas down, so I'm thinking probably not yet. It's like you can maybe go Phoenix on that, but of course, if you want to go Void Ray, one gas just isn't really an option. So I'm intrigued to see what he's planning on doing right here. In the meantime, Chef just working on his drone count, as you would expect to be doing at this stage of the game. Quite a lot of links out for Chef early on, actually. Eight, that's quite a high number. He even keeps them all alive as well. Gets a nice little surround here. And I think that he was expecting that three zealot poke out. And he's able to eliminate one of them. So Grubby's really forced now into a defensive position. Those zealots can't go anywhere because the lings will kill them instantly. And slight... Well, actually, no. Same timing here from Sheth. And goes directly into Roach, Warren, and Evo Chamber. And there we go. 
to Robo right here from Grubby. Has now taken a second assimilator down to the bottom. Not going particularly heavy into that just yet. Doesn't want to put down any more until he gets that Overlord out of the way. Robo means he can get his Observer out nice and quickly there. He can start to take up to Colossus. Admittedly, he is only on one gate at the moment. And, oh, run by time or not. He could actually have gone in there, but he would have lost at least two lings going past the cannon. And three lings aren't really going to get you all that much. Especially bearing in mind that Sheth has managed to get an Overlord in there anyway. Immediately, four more gateways going down. So we could be seeing, well, obviously at the moment it's going to be five gate. Could even be a, a, a strong five or six gate pressure attack here from Grubby. Which would explain the lack of gas. And indeed, he's going to back that up with a Warp Prism as well. Chef currently supply blocks as a result of losing that Overlord for a few seconds. Ooh, that's a 7-gate. Seven 7-gate seven Warp Prism. That's nasty. Eight? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Grubby. Grubby, Grubby, Grubby. Grubby, Grubby of Team Grubby, Grubby. What the hell? 7-gate Warp Prism. That's pretty brutal, actually, and it might be able to exploit Chef's defenses quite nicely here. I am intrigued. I am very... Very much so intrigued, ladies and gents, as to how this one will go. Ling and Roach is out at the moment. He's working on plus one, but it's nowhere near. Grubby hasn't got plus one either yet, but he will. Like, Ling and Roach versus eight gate. I don't see that working out, really, for Chef. I don't see him being able to hold it, but we'll see. Especially with the Warp Prison backup. There's all sorts of possibilities here. Offensive pylon down in a good position. Can easily reinforce, especially if he knocks those destructible debris down, which he may attempt to do. Sheth's kept a few links out there, so he might look to poke out and scout. Sheth smells something's up. He's got 63 drones, which is a good number at this stage, so it should be okay. But yeah, a big two-base, eight-gate execution push. Backed up by the Warp Prism here. Warp Prism's been... Ooh, it's a sentry one as well. Yeah, this is nasty. This is really nasty. So if he goes now for harassment here and warps in off that Warp Prism, he could... Do yeah, he could basically kill the main. This, honestly, unless... Oh, he loses one sentry right there. Caught out of position, but with three sentries, you can block that off entirely. And eight zealots now by Grubby into the main, and Sheth's going to really struggle to deal with this, honestly. This is going to be incredibly hard to do, but nicely done there by Sheth, realizing that the sentries are the target priority. How many sentries are left up? Two. Ling's now streaming in here. The zealots into the mineral line, working their way on the spine crawl. Not too much economic damage being done as of yet. Two sentries left here, and zealots now actually walling off against any kind of reinforcements. There's actually an offensive pylon down here as well, ready to bring units in once again. Two sentries are up, and of course, Grubby can warp in more sentries once he's got the gas for it. But bear in mind, this is eight gate. You don't have a lot of resources to play with. If you're warping in eight units at a time, that is significant. You can't really sustain that. It's pretty much a double four gate. More units being warped in right now. The sentry count and nice focus fire right there by Shep. However, Grubby picks up. Make sure that the two sentries remain alive. There's no energy available there. If that goes down, then the roaches are going to start streaming in here. Building's getting gutted. The mineral line has been absolutely wrecked. Sheth is down to 28 drones. This is pretty nasty here by Grubby. Very nasty indeed. A nice pick up there. Good micro by Grubby. Exceptional play here thus far. Sheth is taking an absolute pounding. And now his third is under threat. While he's dedicating to that, four more warp in from that pylon. This is unbelievable play by Grubby. Absolutely stellar. The execution is almost flawless. And now the force has just got too large, I feel, for him to actually clean up. He doesn't have the economy to support repeated builds. More zealots, as you can see, into that drone line, dealing huge amounts of damage. The natural's really the only thing. That, that's not even unscathed now. Zealots moving in from all sides. I can see this being a GG any moment. I don't see how Sheth can come back. 22 links coming in to try and clean up the remainder of this force here, but with plus one zealots, they are not going to last very long at all. As you are well aware, gets this around, crushes that in the mineral line, but 15 drones onto 42 now. Hatchery's about to go down. There's the GG once again, and wow. Grubby, grubby, grubby. Very well played here by him. Absolutely stellar stuff, what can I say?